Hey there techies, welcome to another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Crystal Security. It's been requested by a few people, so I figured why not? And there's not a lot of tests out there on Crystal Security. In addition to that, uh, looking at the infrastructure of Crystal Security, it looks to show a lot of promise. Now, with that said, you're probably wondering, well, why are you in Windows 7 and not in Windows 10? Well, I already tested this product in Windows 10 and it completely failed. I uh, really, really was disappointed in the performance, so I wanted to make sure that I gave it a fair test. So the one test that I'm going to upload uh, is going to be this one. Uh, whatever the results are, it's getting uploaded. That's it. Uh, but it's in Windows 7, uh, so a very well-supported, well-rounded operating system. It should be uh, able to run in this and perform full basically full force, no problems whatsoever. So uh, it does state though down here, the compatibility, it's supposed to work for Windows 10. So that's kind of interesting that it didn't perform that well in Windows 10 considering it's well, it's supposed to work according to the manufacturer. It says it right there, but we're gonna give it another try. And there is two different uh, versions of this that you can get. You can either get the installer, which is designed more to integrate with your system, or the portable, which you could run off of a flash drive or some sort of removable media, or just download it to your desktop if you want, you know, your buddy's computer is infected and he still wants to use his useless antivirus. Well, there you go. You clean up with this and uh, never know the difference and you'll continue to think that his useless antivirus is actually doing something. Well, for the sake of this test, we're going to go ahead and go with the installer. Uh, just to integrate it more with the system and give it the best bet considering this is designed to be a secondary scanner not a primary scanner and as usual we'll save it to our desktop now this is very interesting right down here uh, smart screen filter blocks this uh, i found that very interesting off the bat and uh, it claims it's unsafe so i download it and then i have to actually go here and run it if i want or delete the program so uh, they might want to get that fixed uh, it, guys over at crystal security yeah um might want to kind of fix that there it's going to drive people away so let's close that out and uh, take a look at the installer or down uh, installer I guess we'll call it not even a megabyte uh, it's pretty nice to see well 99.99 megabytes so we'll just call it a megabyte just round up right guys as you can see right here it in bytes yeah it is a megabyte so we'll call it one megabyte either way it's pretty good so let's go ahead and install this run here's the this is the installation here so far, it is very straightforward. Uh, you got your path right there, next, and install. Okay, so user account controls, publisher unknown. So it looks like they just don't have it digitally signed, uh, and that may be contributing to the smart screen issue as well. So far, installation looks pretty straightforward. Okay, so it looks like it wants to run the executable here. Um, so far, it's, there we go, okay. Uh, this software is provided as is without any express or implemented warranty. Oh boy, developer is not responsible for any loss or damage caused by the software. Well, that's reassuring. That really wants me, uh, really is going to sell it right there. I, I feel that they should put this in some sort of a user agreement within the installer, uh, you know, giving the user either an option to accept or decline the user agreement. I really don't like the way they do that. Um, it just, I don't know, it just seems kind of tacky to me. It might scare some people away. But anyways, getting past that, let's take a look at the interface here and go through some of the options and what they do. Interface, first off, the way it is laid out. Um, it's good. I, I've seen worse. I, I do think that there's a lot of wasted space here. I know that they do have this area in here for the files that it does encounter and it'll then in turn list whether they're safe, unsafe, uh, and, and or... Um, any other classification of the files itself. So, I mean, it's nice for advanced users, but I feel maybe for novice users, it could be improved a little bit. Uh, down here, they have a silent mode. You can toggle that on or off, so that's nice to see. That's right out in the open. Um, auto decision, I kind of guess that's similar to silence or silent mode. I'm just gonna go on a whim and guess that. But uh, nevertheless, they they do look similar. So uh, whitelist right here, you have a whitelist, blacklist on the side here, we'll go through this panel. Uh, check up here, so it looks like you got quick, advanced, which appear to be realistically the same. Uh, uploads, unrecognized, and some statistics right down here. As you can see, we're testing on version 3.5, and then we have our latest database is already up to date, it looks like, so, or maybe, maybe downloaded uh, very quickly after the installation was quick, or completed, I should say. Uh, started today, obviously, so not much in the way of statistics. Event monitor 000, zero, zero quarantine, okay, great. Let's go over the settings now, because this is where it gets really interesting, guys. 
Um, so start with Windows is not checked, as you can see right here. I'm going to go ahead and check that. Uh, Auto decision will keep that. Stealth Guard will leave that. Uh, default, Silent Mode will leave that. Um, pass it protected. That's nice to see. We can actually pass it protected so you can prevent people from coming in here and altering the settings. Uh, start as administrator, yes. Minimize on startup. We do not want the full interface to start. We just want it to run in the background, as you can see right down here. Shell integration, uh, yes, we do want that. We're going to need that to scan our malware folder. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that. Uh, these are the settings that I would like to see them also change to default. Uh, there's no reason that it shouldn't start with Windows, especially considering that it's designed to be a secondary scanner. I feel like um, this should definitely be ran um, during startup. So I'd like to see them change that as well as automatically enable shell integration and then minimize at startup is definitely uh, required pretty much when starting something in Windows that is not necessarily needed uh, interface wise, I should say. It's designed to run the background. That's it. Don't need to pull up the interface. So that's the settings I would change there. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Um, so it looks like it is updating the database actually. Interesting. Uh, okay, so let's go to protection here. Uh, so it looks like we have protection of objects. Okay, active processes on access scanner. I was not checked. That's because it uses caching, I believe. And then monitoring, so it does all files by default, program files, uh, system files, okay. And then the engines. Now this is where it gets really interesting, guys, is Crystal Security actually does have their own signature engine, but then they also use their cloud engine along with different heuristics and behavioral analysis modules. But then they have a collective cloud. Now this collective cloud is actually Virus Total's database. Uh, they have they use, utilize Virus Total's API service, and that in turn allows Crystal Security to cross-reference cross their database. Now this is for only executables, guys, but it allows them to cross-reference their database and relay that information back to Crystal Security and make a decision on whether the file is unsafe or uh, is deemed okay based on what Virus Total has seen on it. So that is the really cool thing about Crystal Security and realistically why I wanted to uh, definitely throw this test out here and make sure that I do a lot of um, a lot of research on this application, or at least as much as possible in the little bit of time I've had. Uh, and then down here, trust applications with digital signature. Now, you're probably wondering why wouldn't you check that? I mean, if it's digitally signed, check it, right? Uh, wrong. Digital signatures are a good way of telling if something is genuine, however, Anybody can go online and get the um, software required to digitally sign something, parentheses right there, and um, then bypass that security. So if you were to check that and then a piece of malware is digitally signed and a lot of adware is in fact digitally signed, that is going to exclude that from the program and cross-referencing those other databases and uh, essentially you're going to get infected then. So leave that unchecked. Uh, I do not, would never, would never check that on my system at all. All right, so behavior. So it looks like this is the auto decision behavior module right here and the options that it's going to reference and then in turn carry out. So for action for safe files is going to be always allow. Seems pretty straightforward to me. This is pretty easy so far. Uh, and actions for unsafe files is to always block. I would agree with that. However, I might want to change that to remove. So that is what I'm going to do. So any unsafe files and encounters, um, I'm going to go ahead and remove in this case. Now on your system, if you were to just install this, you may want to leave it at just block. Uh, in, in the case of, let's see, you had a program on the system that were to be genuine, well, if you go ahead and it removes that file that is associated with that program, you're going to have issues in running that, and then you're going to have to find it, put it back, yada, 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 and you're just going to cause yourself a lot of headaches. So it'd be a lot easier just to unblock a file uh, than necessarily trying to retrieve that file and then put it back and replace it into its original location with original data. So for the sake of the test to get better detection rates and more accurate detection rates, I'm going to change that. But for anyone else, just leave it at blocked. Um, that's what I would recommend at least. Actions for suspicious files, user intervention. Yeah, it's good enough. And then same thing with known files. Yeah, pretty much good enough. I would leave it at that uh, just because it requires, in my mind, interaction at that point, just because it's unknown. And uh, it could be good, could be bad. Let the user decide, or at least 
I would decide. So uh, if I was installing this on someone's computer who wasn't necessarily tech savvy, I would probably just say um, to always block and then sort it out later if there is an issue with it. But only do that for people that you contact you know, relatively uh, on a regular basis just because uh, it could pose some issues if there's a genuine program that they're trying to access and this would be then blocking it. So just keep that in mind, guys. Um, you definitely would want to experiment with this program in your situations because every situation is going to be different. Notifications on the side here, obviously it's just timers for these different modules right here. Uh, and now recommended action right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check highlight. What that's going to do is it's going to highlight the action that Crystal Security would recommend within that situation that we would encounter. Uh, I think that should be a default action. I don't know why they don't highlight that or have that checked automatically. I just think that uh, for a novice user installing this, that would definitely be something you'd want to uh, tell them and at least advise them which action is the appropriate action because advanced users, we're going to read the text and we're going to read uh, whether, you know, always block, remove, or allow, and we're going to pick the one that we feel is best based on the situation we're encountering at that specific moment. So I want to highlight that just to see what they're going to recommend, and then we're going to in turn do the recommended action. So let's click apply those actions. Uh, check up here. This is essentially just their scan module. Uh, what is the on-demand scanner going to scan uh, versus the on-access scanner or the real-time scanner? Uh, so what do we have here? We have quick and advanced for options. This is for the quick mode. I think this is kind of useless in my mind because when you do a quick mode, why wouldn't you do a quick scan? Doing an advanced scan just doesn't make sense to me. So why there's even an option for that? Don't ask me. Um, maybe just because it's the first option here and then people's, I don't know. I have no idea why they would have that there. And then actions on threat detection is set to inform. Uh, we can either delete permanently or block. And I'm just going to say inform because I want to see what it found and then in turn choose the appropriate action, which is going to pretty much be delete. But uh, I still want to see what it's going to do. Scheduling, uh, you can essentially schedule a daily or weekly scan. It doesn't appear they have monthly scans. Uh, with this program here and the fact that it utilizes a whitelist and a blacklist and it's only a secondary scanner I kind of would like to maybe see uh, an additional option there just to do maybe monthly scans with it instead of weekly or daily scans I think that's kind of unless your uh, other antivirus or anti-malware application is not up to par I just feel that that's too much and not necessary to do uh, in the system I know some of you can argue with me but uh, I run Komodo and I've never had an issue and I usually end up doing monthly scans with it. Uh, what do we have on the right side here for sensitivity? We have the different scope here of different files and types of files we're going to be able to scan. Uh, the classifications I should call it. So program files, system files, these are all different classifications. We can also customize them and then uh, choose all files if we want. That's going to take a long time though, a long time. So. Seeing it's a secondary scanner, if you're having issues, you might want to come in here and check this. Uh, if you're cleaning up an infected system, it's going to take longer, but uh, it's definitely going to be more thorough at scanning. Uh, if your system's clean, you know it's clean, you can just leave it unchecked. It's already a clean system. There is no need to uh, scan all the files on there. Uh, file types, common executables, yeah, that's pretty much all you need right there. Processes and auto runs. Yeah, that's uh, something. That's places that uh, malware typically will hide. You know, either running in RAM or the auto runs on the system. So that is pretty much the interface right here. Uh, one thing is, if we look down here and I hover over up to date, that is your check for updates. So those of you who have installed this and are wondering where the heck do I check for updates? I mean, I go down here, I can right click, but man, there's no button in the interface here. Yeah, there is. I would like to see them change that. Uh, maybe, re maybe if anything, just reverse it around so that when you hover over it, it says up to date versus when you know check for updates. So essentially, make check for updates uh, default, so it's always displaying that. And then when you hover over it say, hey, you're already up to date. There's no need to click this button. Uh, I just think that would be a lot more, uh, it would make a lot more sense in my mind. So uh, that is essentially, I know it's 14 minutes here, almost 15 minute video, but uh, there's a lot a lot in this small little application for a one megabyte application. Uh, we have virus totals database being utilized in here. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention Komodo's uh, file intelligence 
is also integrated within this system. That engine is in here too. So uh, that's really, really interesting. We have a lot, a lot of uh, security in this little application. So the potential for this to really succeed is there. And that's uh, really great to see. And I hope that it does definitely it does succeed on this system. So with that said, we're gonna end the configuration, installation, information video kind of like that. And then we're going to move on to the prevention test. So we're going to see how well Crystal Security is able to protect a clean system and keep it clean uh, with malware that's coming from the internet as well as a pack of malware. So then we're going to run that unknown malware to see how well the behavioral portions of this program react. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the prevention test.